Okay. I'm only not. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. Oh, you want to Mortified. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for coming and welcome you to the second Tipperary Relay for Life. In particular, I want to welcome our guest of honours, the survivors who are here in front of us, and you are terrific in the warm-up. Well done. <laughs> and very important people in the life of the survivors are their carers. So give them a bull of us. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, I'm just delighted to be here and it's a real privilege. Uh, I, I actually didn't see this last year, but uh, to be honest, I've just been blown away by the, the atmosphere that's here. It's really it's something, something special and um, it's not what I was expecting. Uh, I think ever, ever since I became aware of, of Relay, I've just been, sorry about the, the mic there, it's just, uh, I've just been really, really impressed and really inspired by everyone I've met. Uh, from, from the survivors, the absolutely amazing survivors, the courage and the resilience that they have to the, to the carers uh, and the families, the support and, and the positivity that they have, you know, it's just, none of this would happen without those very special people. And I've just been 
really struck by the resolve uh, that they have, you know, against such massive challenges that, that I can only, yeah, just do a quick switch. You know, such challenges that, uh, you know, I can only, I wouldn't dream of, of even encountering what they go through. Um, so, you know, a few weeks back, or a few months back at the original launch in the Abbey Court, uh, I spoke about maybe the lessons that this, the world of sport could have for, for, for something like Relay. But the more I think about it, the more I think the relationship would work the other way around. Uh, for me personally, uh, you know, I've seen a completely new understanding of what it means to, to, to struggle in the face of huge adversity, to, to have courage and character in, in the face of massive odds that might be against you. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's really been instructive for me to see how how people like your survivors and the carers, how they operate in daily lives with such a massive challenge against them. And I feel that, if anything, the world of professional sport or even amateur sport, whether it would be the, the Heineken Cup or the Premiership or even the GAA, could learn a great deal from the resolve and the spirit and the experiences of everyone here today, everyone gathered here today, to get over such daily challenges in their lives. I think it's amazing and I think the other way around that professional sport could actually learn so much from your resolve. Um, thank you Luke and thank you Trevor for such a, a fantastic words. I, it's a, indeed is a privilege for me to be here today at the Tipperary Relay. As a, as a Tipperary man, I'm, I'm from Nina back the road so it, it's, it's fantastic to be here today and um, actually I have a, a, a personal uh, connection with, with this tune pitch. My very short career in sport, unlike Trevor, um, began here on this pitch when we played tune. Um, Don the Arrow shirt proudly and um, or Fred we beat you fairly soundly. So um, <laughs> I have very, very, very happy memories of this pitch. Well actually it was the, the front pitch. Um, but it's great to be back again here on such a fantastic occasion. I never thought I would be here. Um, I just wanted to really echo the words. Um, Really just to say, first of all, to the, the caregivers that are here, a fantastic tribute, you know, um, that are fantastic brothers. You, you have been and continue to be such fantastic care to, to loved ones and have gone through, and are going through a cancer journey. And we're very particularly privileged to have you here today. It's absolutely to the survivors, our heroes. Um, it, it, it's fantastic to see so many and, and we really feel it a rightful place. And, and thanking each and every one of you for proudly wearing the purple t-shirt and just showing everyone that, that you have, can, cancer can be fought and can be beaten. To the, the teams and, and, and the committee, particularly um, as head of fundraising, I know how difficult it is in these times to actually fundraise and, and to, to raise money and to, to gather, motivate people to get involved. But it's a fantastic achievement that this year the number of teams have increased. And I know that you've been out battling and fundraising actively over the weeks and I just wanted to pay on behalf of the Irish Cancer Society and the people that are going to help a massive, massive thank you and a, a big round of applause for the committee and the team. Okay, so I suppose uh, that's more or less the formalities open and um, I just want to declare the, the Relay for Life 2012 officially open. So, let the clap begin. otherwise I have a tendency to waffle. So if I'm not looking at you, I'm, well, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Kismet and I'm a team member of Team Pendu. This is our second year doing Relay for Life Tipperary. The atmosphere out here is one of friendship and family and it brings the fun into fundraising. The most helpless feeling in the world is to hear someone you love tell you that they have cancer. It is not a fight you can control. It is not a fight you can fight for them. You love, encourage, and support them, but you still feel helpless, and that there should be more you can do. My something more is Relay for Life, Tipperary. Like everyone here, I am here to honor survivors who have fought for their lives and won. You give hope to those who are fighting now. We cherish the memories of the people we have lost to this fight. And we, through the mission, get the information out there for the checks and early signs. We raise money 
to fund the research so that less people have to hear the words, I have cancer. Like every fundraising event, Relay for Life to Prairie couldn't be possible without the people who do a lot. Sorry, Paige. <laughs> a lot of hard work on me. <laughs> Don't take the paper! <laughs> We're testing you, it's a test. <laughs> Uh, what for the people who do a lot of? Hard work on behalf of all the teams. I would like to thank our amazing committee. <laughs> thank you for the helping us to fight back. Also, I would like to thank all the teams for without you there would not be a relay. To the old teams, welcome back my friends. To the new teams, you're in for an incredible, amazing, wonderful two days with many new friendships to be made. Thank you. Thanks, Margaret. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hayf Hogan, and I'm here uh, for two reasons, really. I'm wearing this yellow T-shirt because in my personal life, I had the privilege and honor of looking after my father, who passed away on the 23rd of April 2010 after a five-year battle with prostate cancer. And myself and my mother, who I learned all my caring skills from, she's an amazing woman, and my brothers and sisters were very fortunate to look after my father at home. I also have the privilege and honour of working as a nurse in our local hospital. And I am 20 years nursing this year. I know, I don't look at the name That's okay, guys, it's all right. And I can say L'Oreal has a lot to answer for. Um, 20 years nursing this year. And over those 20 years, I have met so many people, so many incredible people as carers, as people diagnosed with cancer, going through treatment, people who are celebrating surviving cancer, and unfortunately looking after people who didn't quite make it. To me, carers and a caregiver is the following. It's not just about physical care. It's the person who sends the text message. It's the person who makes that call. It's the person who will take you to the doctor. The person who will wait in A&E with you for hours while you wait to be called. And the person to bring you home again. It's the person who collects that prescription from you or drops down to the doctor to collect the prescription to start with. It's the person who makes you tea. It's the person who makes tea for the people who come to visit you. It's the person who looks after you day and night, and especially in those dark hours in the early mornings when you begin to question what's this all about, that's what a caregiver is. So I would like to acknowledge this year and celebrate us as caregivers. We're very good at what we do, and long may it continue. Uh, hello to me, Vera. Um, I'm really, I'm Pauline Ryan O'Mara. You should be killed for calling me Ryan. I know, I'm only joking. Um, I'm a survivor, you know, um, and I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, four years ago, on the 3rd of April, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I will never forget that day, and I'm not going to start crying, okay? I'll just never forget that day. Um, I can look back at it, but I'm not going to stare. I'm just, I have to get on with my life. Uh, um, I have a son down there listening to me and he's fit to kill me. He has no yellow t-shirt on either. He's my carer and he's 17. Um, thanks, Ryan. Uh, I'm sure can... <laughs> okay. The reason, I think the reason I am here and so well today is because I told my friends, I had a few, a good few friends, but a few very close friends at the time, and I told them and they told me to go to the doctor and that's, and I did. And I'm just thanking God for that because I'm, as you will know by my tent over there, my, my appearance, I'm a last minute person and I put everything off. I put everything on the long finger. So I'm glad that I had some really good friends in my life at that stage that told me get into the doctor and get it started and I did. And it's because of early detection. I'm, I'm so well today, thank God. Um, I, I, was, I suppose I was always fairly fit in my life, but I was too lazy to kind of do much, you know, as in go run and now, um, less than 12 months later, I was running 10 kilometer runs. Um, I do them for charity for, I did them for charity for a few years, but now I do them for fun. Because, um, you know, there's so much fundraising, I suppose people get fit up for the suit. But um, all I can say to the, oh, I want to say to you, um, 
why Marty Langton was looking inside my top while we were dancing. He, stop it. It's not, it's nothing to do with that. I have, I have a t-shirt on, you see, and there's something written on it, and I'm shaking like mad. Um, <laughs> I did fundraise the year last year around the field, as you know, because I kissed President Obama. I didn't, I kissed him and hugged him, but I just hugged everybody and made a lot of money and it was great for real life. So, I'm going to finish on this now. I'm just so glad to be here and I'm going to stay fighting back and I was never as fit in my life. I can't stop dancing, I can't stop running. I love life and I'm going to live forever. Okay. Um, I'm really shaking up because of this small little job I want to do before I get off stage. I want Trevor Hogan to hug me, please. <laughs> and he, I won't charge him, but everybody else has to pay. <laughs> How do I explain the t-shirts? Hug me, I hugged Obama. Obama's crossed out Trevor Hogan's under. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Have a Thank <laughs> you. 
My name is Neve Hogan and I'm with the Nina Players Dramatic Walkers Group. This is our second year taking part in Relay. We started uh, last year for the first Tipperary Relay for Life. And we said we'd put another team together this year. Yeah, um, last year when I did Relay, my father passed away from cancer in advanced prostate cancer in 2010. And it was about a year and a few months after he passed away that the first Relay took place. And I just thought we contribute a lot to various different charities. And I thought for once I'd like to give it towards research and to see if we can try and find some form of cure for these cancers. There seems to be an awful lot invested from the pharmaceutical industry into treating the cell or treating the cancer itself instead of actually finding, well, what is this? Where is it coming from and how can we prevent it from recurring in the future? So for me, I felt the Irish Cancer Society's um, goal in achieving that was something that I wanted to contribute to, both in my personal life as a caregiver and in my professional life as a nurse. Um, and I, I think this is a very worthy cause. The other side of things is this is a huge community event. I was absolutely blown away last year with the amount of people that turned up and amazed at the amount of people that cancer has, whose lives cancer has touched, including my own. My sister took part in Relay for Life in Napier in New Zealand six months ago. So we said we'd do it twice a year in memory of my father, Maureen in New Zealand and me in Ireland. So we're going to keep this going as long as we can. Relay is, is something, it's very hard to actually put a word on, it's more of a feeling. To be out here and feel the presence of survivors, we hear of so many people who've passed away from cancer that we actually forget that people do survive this disease and it's worth fighting for. And in order to appreciate that, you need to be involved, you need to, to feel that sense of community, to feel that sense of love and to feel that sense of, you know, we're going to beat this, we really are going to beat it. And the way to do that is to take part in Relay. For me, that's what it's about. I suppose very simply, the chairman, uh, Luke Marta, uh, invited me for coffee one day about perhaps two years ago or so and um, 
we went for coffee and he asked me if I would join the committee that he would like to have me on it. And I said, I'll think about it. I thought about it a little and yes, I decided that I would become a part of the committee. And um, yes, I did. And I've been a member of the committee to what effect, I'm not so sure. But it has been a very, very enriching experience for me. Yes. Well, I think, of course, it's about cancer and it's about it's about service and prevention and celebrating, remembering and fighting back, of course. But actually I think it's about something much, much bigger than this. It's about people, it's about humanity and it's about the connectivity between all of us as human beings and the fact that we as human beings share this planet, the sense of co-responsibility that we have one for another. <coughs> and um, uh, the illness of cancer is, is so, so prevalent that there is scarcely a person, an adult person, whose life has not been touched either directly or indirectly by this illness. Well, for me, it has been a humbling experience in the very best sense. Uh, and what I mean by that is that just to encounter so many people with such generosity and such big-heartedness and such determination and good humour to try and do something as and make a contribution to try and, and beat this disease and help those who suffer from it and try to help to make funds available for research into prevention. So it has been humbling and very, very enriching at the same time. The people that I meet and just the sense of being part of something just so much bigger than myself. So it, I suppose in a nutshell it kind of, I suppose, has moved me from maybe apathy to empathy or something like that. I'm Theresa Morgan Langton. I'm married to Mark. My sister is a survivor. She started this Relay for Life doing it last year. I did it with her and back again from the States this year to do it for Relay for Life. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Mark. Um, my father is a survivor. Um, both myself and Theresa uh, were here last year just after our wedding. and. Um, Basically, we're inspired by this fantastic event. It's made us realise uh, how much a community organisation can do for, for people who suffer and, and fa battle and fight through cancer. Uh, it's inspired us so much that uh, we try to arrange our own event in, in our bar in Nelly Spillane's in the city, in New York City, um, in conjunction with all our partners over there. Uh, uh, we decided to arrange a fundraising night, do what we could for uh, Relay for Life Tipperary. It was an, uh, an amazing success. And basically what it did, it, was op it opened our eyes while we were here. It's after opening the eyes of a lot of Tipperary people in New York City. Um, it brought, it brought it home to them. Th there isn't a family in the country, let alone Tipperary, that hasn't been affected by cancer. <laughs> And it's made them realise that there's a lot of people out there that can raise money, be effective in getting money to help fight this, this terrible disease. Um, so the likes of Tony Spillane, Stephen Carty, uh, Mike Hines and the Spillane group of bears in New York have committed to, to next year running it in all four bears in the Spillane group which should help us to raise even more money next year. So basically that's why we're here. We've taken photographs, we've taken videos, we're going to bring them back, we're going to put them up in the bar, give them to the guys uh, to put up in their bar. We have Facebook pages, web, web pages. It's basically what we're doing is going to, by the medium of, of, of uh, technology, we're going to put it out there to as many people in, in New York City and beyond because believe it or not, there's a lot of Tipperary people out there and they're only too willing to get involved in this. Um, I'm Mark Mellis and I'm the Head of Fundraising at the Irish Cancer Society and it's an absolute privilege to be here today to see the second Relay for Life in Tipperary. Um, being a Tipperary man, I'm, I'm particularly proud to be here and, and from Nina and, and nearby, it's fantastic. It's an amazing event and it's a tribute to the, the committee and everybody and I can't tell you how much the, the Irish Cancer Society um, as a society itself, but also on behalf of the people that we, the thousands of people we help each year, how, how grateful we are for events like this because really the lifeblood of the Irish Cancer Society is its, its, its volunteers and the work that they do and the fundraising and the support and the help to deliver the, the services. 
um, like Relay is, is bringing a lot of information and a lot of awareness about cancer to, to the community here in Tipperary and the communities that Relay is in, which is a huge part and a fantastic part of Relay. So the other part of Relay is, is the funds that are raised. And in, in the current economic crisis, um, as head of fundraising, I know how difficult it is to raise funds, but yet Relay has captured people's imagination and they want to be part of it, and I can understand why, because it's a fantastic event. But they, the funds that are raised do make a huge difference, because it, it's there where the part of the fight back is. And, the, and, and that's great, because we, Irish Cancer Society, we deliver vital services for people who are undergoing cancer treatment, and we also deliver cancer research. So the funds that are raised, for example, in, in, in Tipperary alone, we have the night nursing service. And this is a fantastic service, sadly, for people who are at the end of their cancer journey. But it makes a huge difference to have a qualified nurse. And it's a free service for people. And we provide that throughout Ireland. In, in, in um, Tipperary, there was over 400 nights of night nursing last year, which was delivered. And it's because of Relay we were able to do that. We also have in the economic crisis and times that we have, people get into financial difficulties. It's, it's, it's difficult enough, and I don't have to say that if you're having cancer treatment, but if you're having economic difficulties yourself and financial difficulties and the cancer treatment on top of that, that's a huge, huge burden that we in the Health Cancer Society want to make sure we can help people with. So how we do that is we, we have a financial aid grant scheme. Over 50,000 last year was given to people in Tipperary alone and well over a million throughout Ireland. Um, and that's just two, like we've got other services, we've got the Care to Drive, which we have here in, 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 in around Tipperary as well too, and we have the supporters helping people and the survivorship programme. We have information that is given with, through our, our National Care Helpline, the National Cancer Helpline, and that's for, for everybody, for not just for people going through cancer treatment, that's for anybody who has any questions. And we have a range of literature for people that we can help in giving them information. So. Really, Relay is, is, is another part of the communities coming together and giving information through the Relay and the work that they do throughout the year and imparting that in bringing cancer awareness and getting people to understand about how to do better diagnosis and what the treatments are available and know what's available. But also, Relay is allowing us to deliver all these services. We spend over 22 million a year in Ireland on services for people and also on research. Last year, Relay was able to help us deliver 3.2 million in research projects. Research projects all over the country. In Limerick down the road we have, we have a fantastic researcher there who's working away on a project and, and these are the things that really make happen that can make a huge difference and the research is so important because people want us to get to the place where we are getting better treatments and we are getting better diagnosis and we are making a difference. Like we, we had over 600 actually discoveries made through research in the 25 years that Irish cancer has been going. But we are making, we are making a difference. People are being diagnosed earlier. More people are living with cancer, which is fantastic. And all of this is happening because of community events like Relay. Communities coming together like this here in Tumivar and Anina and around the surrounding area around here. They make a huge difference. That deliver information that help people to understand how they can fight back, how they can celebrate the survivors, which is fantastic, and that we can remember people. And as I say, it's through that remembering that makes us more determined to, to continue on the work we're doing, more determined to make sure that we can have more survivors, and that's what we're all about through the research, and then make sure that those people who unfortunately do contract cancer, we can have world-class cancer care, and that's what we want in Ireland, and that's what we're aiming to deliver through the Irish Cancer Society. And, it's, and I just wanted to say a massive thanks to everybody for... Everything they're doing makes a huge difference and we have a privilege to be able to, through them, help so many thousands of people and deliver this vital research. Um, my name is John Burke. Um, I'm a cancer survivor. I, had, uh, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer in 2006. Um, I was very lucky um, with my diagnosis in that um, I used to get a pain which it transpires had nothing to do with testicular cancer for years and years and by chance I said it to a doctor one day I had a sore eye and I just said I'm getting on now in years and all the rest and he checked me and said look don't think there's anything wrong but we'll, we'll send you to a specialist just to be on the safe side and I was waiting six months for an appointment and I never had the pain in the six months so I considered not even going um, the doctor started checking me and he was telling me all these things he was going to do to me and after about five seconds he just said um, right would you be able to come back for an ultrasound later in the week and a short notice and I said how short he said I'll give you a day 
Uh, they rang me at 12 o'clock that day to be in at 3. That was a Tuesday. They were operating on the Thursday. Um, and that was March, and I went for radio, two weeks of radiotherapy then in um, May. Uh, so the one thing that kept me going while he was telling me, um, like I wasn't paying that much attention to what he was actually saying, the one thing that was in my mind was a guy, I don't know when, years and years ago on the Late Late Show back in Gay Burns Day, um, having had testicular cancer twice and on to say that was the most survivable or one of the most survivable types and that's all I could focus on. And I suppose uh, one of my, one, 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 one of the things that annoys me about the whole situation that I love about the Real, Relay for Life is that people do not talk about cancer. I I was living in Cork at the time, I rang home and told my mother, and she goes, I won't tell anyone. I says, go out and tell everyone, they might get themselves checked. And like I, at that I thought sort of everyone knew. And it was about two years ago, I heard a neighbour had cancer and I went over to see him and all the rest. And in the middle of it, I just dropped in, sure you know I had it. Well, never knew it. And, but when I was, after being diagnosed, I'm, I know some people bottle it up and I suppose you can't blame anyone for, for the reaction, but uh, I started talking to people about it and saying I had it. And, and um, straight away, everyone was saying, oh, I knew someone had that or I know two people had that and they're all grand now. And um, including a family member, my wife, a family member of my wife's, who had had it 15 years previously. The families are very close. He had it 15 years previously as a teenager. No one knew anything until I said I had it. Um, and I just think I came on to relay for life last year. I didn't know what it was about. I knew it was something to do with the Irish Cancer Society raising funds. Um, I was stunned when there was a, a call for, the re, for, 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 for a, a lap by survivors. I didn't even have the t-shirt. I got in and people were just staring, goggle the eyes at me. And I got the t-shirt after. Um, but for me, and I know it's important to raise money and all that, but for me, I think the fact that it raises, it puts survivors out there in front of people and people can see that just, the only time people talk about cancer is when they're being buried. And, and for people to see that others do survive it. And I know to meet another survivor, there's a bond there. And I know I was I was doing um, I was doing a, a, a course a couple of years ago, and there was a, a lady in my class who was also a survivor. And um, I would say one of our lecturers was very fond of um, telling us how you would feel if you were diagnosed with cancer, and neither of us felt the way she reckoned you should feel. We just sat down in the back and laughed, but. I have found two or three times I hear someone had cancer and someone I know and I, it's not easy and you don't want prying but to go over and just say look sorry to hear your news I've been there I got through it I'm okay hopefully you'll be okay too without without taking from the seriousness of the situation that they mightn't be okay, but to give them that bit of hope, I think is, I think it's important. Yeah. Well, I'm Noel O'Mara, and someone says to me, why am I here today? Well, the reason I'm here is roughly over three and a half years ago, my wife Mary was diagnosed with cancer, and it's something she was always afraid of in her life, but when she got it, she faced up to it with great courage. And 
She encouraged a lot of other people that she met through her sickness to fight on and stay going. But during that, we had some very happy days because she encouraged us all to do different things, get out and live our life as we always did. And she went away on holidays while she was sick. And we found that was great. Now, she was such a brave woman that I think she left with us the courage to fight on here now. Because even though she knew she was dying, she never really worried about it. She just says to us, you have to keep going. And we're doing that now, and it is through her courage that I'm here today to try and help other people. If I can, or the family can, save one life through what we're doing today, it'll be a wonderful thing. And I'm sure Mary would like that too, because she never really worried about herself during her illness. She always worried about someone else. And she left that great mark with us now that we are trying to help others, and that's what I'm doing here today. You know, Mary was an unusual strong woman because I have a habit of going to the swimming pool in the mornings and when I come back every morning for the 19 months she was sick, she'd have her breakfast around 10 o'clock. So I go to the pool around 7, I go into the local restaurant and have a cup of coffee. So I get all the news of the day and bring it back to her. And then I bring her breakfast into the bed. And I'd sit at the foot of the bed and have my own breakfast with her. And one morning, I never broke down in front of her, but one morning I did. And she said, what's wrong with you? And I said, Mary, I'm very upset over what's happening to you. And she said, why? Because I said, I'm upset with God. Because she'd done so much for other people, I couldn't believe this happened to her. And she says to me, did it ever dawn you that God wants me? And I said, Mary, did it ever dawn on him that I want you? You know, and the honest words I said, I'd like to go with you. And she said, you can't do that. You have to look after the family and the grandchildren. And she said, I'll be right behind you and I'll be looking after them. And she says, you know, she was so unselfish. She said, but I'd say very few women could say it. She said, maybe you'll be lucky and meet a nice woman to keep your company. And I think that very few people come up with that courage on their deathbed. So that's the kind of thing that's keeping us going today is the great willpower she left with us. And while she was alive, you know, she came to Sunus with us in Nina. And I don't know, there's a lot of people know about Sunus, but Sunus is one of the most relaxing places you can go to in Nina for anyone either fighting cancer or the family of anyone or a relative. And it's named Sunus, you know, it's tranquility. And I can guarantee you, if you go out there, that's what you're going to get. You go in, it's an ordinary house with a kitchen and a kettle, and we all make a mug of tea. And I can tell you, we, done more, we do more laughing there than we ever do crying. Now, people can come there, and some people might be a bit shy about coming there. But if that's the way you feel, you can actually arrange to go in there in private, and you needn't meet any of the other patients or the families that's there. You can go in and do it in private. A lot of people have done that. But once they got to know what Sunus is like, they weren't long coming in with us all for the cup of tea and the crack and the left. You know, so I'd like to make sure that people understand what Sunus is through this. And I was delighted today to hear that out of this money, Sunus is being supported. Because a lot of people had the idea that there was nothing coming back from this money to Sunus. But when I heard it mentioned today, I was really delighted with it. So my message to everyone is, Fight on, keep going, and help one another. That's the big thing. Okay, my name is Jerry Mitchell. I'm from Nina. Um, I had uh, I was diagnosed with stomach cancer um, uh, in February 2007, and basically uh, I um, underwent uh, an operation to remove my stomach in St James's Hospital, and from then I. Um, now I'm a survivor, five and a half years, going on five and a half years. I'm quite happy to be here today. I've heard about Relay for the last few years and unfortunately last year I couldn't be here because I was on holidays in England, but this year I decided I'd come out to see what all the um, crack was about and I have to say that I'm very impressed with the day. I'm very impressed with the, um, the, the family atmosphere, the, the, the friendships that we make. 
I'm also thinking of all the friends that I've made since my diagnosis, since I was diagnosed with cancer myself. I think in all those friends and I'm also thinking of all the friends that have passed on that aren't lucky enough to be here with us today. And I also um, just like to say that uh, I go to a place in Nina called Souvenus Centre and it's sponsored by North Tipperary uh, Hospice Movement and I do a bit of voluntary work there and again meeting people there and the friendships we make and I think that to me cancer is probably all about uh, family, friendships, um, people you meet and uh, basically fighting your battle you know, with family and with friends and with community like today. So thank you very much for everything. Hey, Porik Morden from Boris O'Kane and I'm on team recruitment uh, with Relay. Uh, I suppose it was a great experience to get involved in Relay. Uh, it's our second one and uh, True, Martina Burns was the one that twisted my ha arms to get me in. And, uh, but certainly the whole thing for me is emotional. Even though I wasn't affected by cancer, my family thankfully haven't been affected by cancer. But at, after saying that, most families are affected by cancer. But it is emotional. I'm just after looking at the candle of hope and the candles going out and just seeing this, you know, some of them are in celebration, more are for, in memory. And it's actually frightening to see how many is in memory rather than celebration. But from that point of view, when they're lit and you're walking around through it, you can see people's emotion, but also you can see that they have taken an, another step away from that person and they feel uplifted. So it's emotional and uplifting. Uh, a lot of work goes into it and uh, there's great credit due to teams. Uh, and talking about teams, uh, I suppose there is a family involvement in teams. My wife uh, is involved in a team called Crazy Ladies and if you've seen them they're definitely crazy ladies uh, but look at it again it, you know it is uh, a, an involvement for communities uh, my community the, you know she has a full team of, of crazy ladies and they're all from Borsakian and that's their thing to look forward to it every year and uh, to, to feel that they are doing something for, for themselves it's also an awareness it's brilliant to see the awareness that's out there, be it health leaflets or just the survivors. Uh, you know, I talk about the candle of hope, but just to see the amount of survivors. Because unfortunately, when we think about cancer, we think about people's memory, really. And it's great to see the people actually come through this. So overall, it's uplifting. And uh, I have to say, uh, from a whole committee point of view, there's a lot of work goes into it, but it's very worthwhile when you see it at the end. So thankfully, uh, the weather was good and we're, we're coming out of that. So that's really it's on teams. <laughs>
Come on, lads, will you smile, will you? One, two, three for Tom. Hey, up your boy. I'm getting it wrong. And could I also have Alan Kelly? I'd like to thank you all for coming and welcome you to the second Tipperary Relay for Life. In particular, I want to welcome our guest of honours, the survivors who are here in front of us, and you're terrific in the warm-up. Well done. <laughs> and very important people in the life of the survivors are their carers. So give them a bull of us. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, I'm just delighted to be here, and it's a real privilege. Uh, I, I actually... I might film another one soon as you stop doing that. Pause, are you in? The world of professional sport or even amateur sport, whether it would be the, the Heineken Cup or the Premiership or even the GAA, could learn a great deal from the resolve and the spirit and the experiences of everyone here today, everyone gathered here today, to get over such daily challenges in their lives. I think it's amazing and I think the other way around that professional sport could actually learn so much from your resolve. Um, thank you Luke and thank you Trevor for such a, a fantastic words. I, it's a, indeed is a privilege for me to be here today at the Tipperary Relay, as a, as a Tipperary man, I'm, I'm from Nina, back the road, so it, it's, it's fantastic to be here today. And um, actually, I have a, a, a personal connection with, with this tomb pitch. My very short career in sport, unlike Trevor, um, began here on this pitch when we played tomb. Um, Don the Arrow Oak shirt proudly, and um, or Fred Wee Beachy fairly soundly. So, um, <laughs> I have very, very, very happy memories of this pitch. Well, actually, it was the, the front pitch. Um, but it's great to be back again here on such a fantastic occasion. I never thought I would be here. Um, I just wanted to really echo the words. Um, really just to say, first of all, to the, the caregivers that are here, a fantastic tribute, you know, um, that are fantastic. Brothers. You, you've been and continue to be such fantastic care to, to the loved ones and have gone through and are going through a cancer journey. And we're very particularly privileged to have you here today absolutely to the survivors, our heroes, um, it, it, it's fantastic to see this last year, but to be honest, I've just been blown away by the, the atmosphere that's here, it's really something, something special and um, it's not what I was expecting. 
uh, I think ever ever since I became aware of, of really, I've just been sorry about the, the mic there. It's just uh, I've just been really really impressed and really inspired by everyone I've met, uh, from from the survivors, the absolutely amazing survivors, the courage and the resilience that they have, to the to the carers and, and the families, the support and, and the positivity that they have. You know, it's just none of this would happen without those very special people. And I've just been really struck by the resolve uh, that they have you know against such massive challenges that that i can only yeah just do a quick switch you know such challenges that uh, you know i can only i wouldn't dream of, of even encountering what they go through um so you know a few weeks back or a few months back at the original launch in the abbey court i, I spoke about maybe the lessons that this, the world of sport could have for 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 something like relay but the more I think about it, the more I think the relationship would work the other way around. Uh, for me personally, uh, you know, I've seen a completely new understanding of what it means to, to, to struggle in the face of huge adversity, to, to have courage and character in, in the face of massive odds that might be against you. And, you know, it's, it's really been instructive for me to see how how people like your survivors and the carers, how they operate in daily lives with such a massive challenge against them. And I feel that if any...